right, welcome back to Chapter 5 of our Introduction to the Dairy Raid Offense series. A little bit delayed uh, last week. You didn't get a Dairy Raid intro uh, chapter because I was sick, uh, coughing all week. Tried to get one done over the weekend, but I had a mini camp, and because of that, I was yelling, obviously, all day. And, of course, I lost my voice, so... See, it's not 100% back right now, but I don't want to get too far behind, so we're going to power through it and get through Chapter 5 today. And Chapter 5 will be our last look at the running game in the in the Dairy Raid offense, and that will be talking about the power scheme and, or the gap scheme, depending on how you want to see it. It's all basically the same thing. <clears throat> all right, so as we've been building through this, Series we've been talking a lot about balance, uh, whether it's in the passing game, vertical and horizontal stretches, uh, inside outside in the run game. Another way that we can create balance in the running game is to use blocking schemes that complement each other. Use the backfield action to create flow one direction and get the ball to come back the other uh, direction. And to me, that's exactly what the power scheme is in is with in the power, modern spread offense run game is through the blocks of the offensive line, the down blocks of the majority of the offensive line, you create flow one direction. The backfield action creates flow another way. And with a pull kick out block or anything like that, you set an edge. And so... A power scheme is a nice complement to your standard inside zone because it can create both a counter action and a more gap sound action to when you're playing against teams that are a little bit better uh, sound uh, flow wise with a zone scheme. Uh, gap schemes are are good to use against teams that are very uh, downhill oriented. So you can create flow one direction and you come back the other. All right. So when we get into the classroom, we're going to talk about how we set up a gap scheme, how we block a gap scheme, and then how as a ball carrier, we're going to read through it. And then after that, we're going to get into some examples of how Phil Longo uses the power scheme. All right. So we'll see you when we get into the classroom. All right. Here we are in huddle. And we're going to install a couple of the basic schemes that come with the power scheme. All right. So to understand the power scheme, the way I see it is we build from the pull out. Okay. So a pull. What is a pull? Obviously, a pull is a offensive line or a blocker. I don't want to say offensive lineman. A blocker who is going to move down from his gap. Okay, straight out, and he's looking to kick out or lead block, depending on what the call is, to the play side gap. Okay, in a standard power scheme, usually that, that block comes in the form of a kick out block, and depending on who we're, tr who we're blocking, uh, where the gap is, it will determine where that block is going. We can run inside trap, blocking a defensive tackle. We can run power or counter when we come out to the outside edge here. Okay, so that's the first block we look for. <clears throat> we call that the pull. The next most important block we're looking for is the pull check. Okay, a pull check is the block on the defender who is over, who is covering the player who is pulling okay in this case it's the defensive tackle so this block is really important okay so we want to maintain that block and we don't want to allow this defensive tackle to scrape down the line okay so it's really important that we get that so our pull check is the next closest defense uh, blocker to the pull check defender who is the one who is covering the pulling player okay so we have the pull we have the pull check now in 95 percent of 
zone or sorry uh, gap schemes power schemes next what we're looking for is everybody else to be working down blocks okay down blocks so down block is we block away from the call down block down block we might here get a double down and we're working double down to the back side potentially likely not in this case in fact we would probably be going down 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 and kick out so essentially what we're creating is the situation that Vince Lombardi famously put we're gonna get a wall here and we're gonna get a wall here and we're gonna get the ball going up the alley depending on the speed and the and the agility of our offensive line and our, and our running back we could be working counter steps here we could we'll be working back steps uh, we could change the backfield action but this is essentially the same with this kind of scheme what I actually like to try to do is I try to get this guy going laterally okay working getting flow sideways and then we create either a nice overflow or a cutback right up in here all right so this is a basic power scheme uh, other variations that we would see would be for example the GT lead okay so when we run GT we still got the same kick out we're also gonna pull the backside tackle and he's gonna lead up the play side gap okay and then what we'll do to pick up everybody else is that again we'll create our down blocks so down next available is gonna be the center okay and then our play side tackle would work down to the inside linebacker here um, depending on the speed of the offensive line and this is something we see at Wisconsin where we will see them running this with actually with their H back wing back type uh, so they would put the tight end here for example and then what we would create is we would get either the pull check here and turn this into a zone re uh, read or we'll just down there and then we'll lead here get a little bit more speed up on the play side gap uh, <clears throat> we also will run with this action and what I like to do is we will run counter action and we'll run the back into the mesh let the pullers come through and then we'll come back with a counter so Another another blocking scheme where we can change up the backfield action and to create a different look without having to change what the lineman is doing. So this is a really a multiplicative type blocking scheme is in comparison to um, some other gap schemes. All right, so that's how we install the power scheme. Pretty basic. Again, the difference between a zone scheme and a power scheme and a gap scheme is gap scheme, the ball is designed to go in one spot. There are options to go other places, but the running back knows he's on his own if he goes the, those those ways. In this case, we're looking to get the ball right here in the B gap. So we're creating a seal, we're creating a seal, and we're even getting a lead blocker, but the ball is designed to go here in this gap. A little less freedom for the ball carrier, but a little more focused if we're trying to get the ball to a specific area. So that's definitely a benefit of the power scheme. All right. So next up, we are going to go back into the huddle again, and we are going to look at some examples and some of the quite varied examples of how Phil Longo uses the power gap scheme in the Badger offense. Okay, here we are back in huddle. We're going to be taking a look at some examples of the Badgers running uh, various forms of the gap schemes, power schemes, uh, this season. So let's take a look at first one. We're going to start off here. This is just your standard G power pull kick now with the way that I was lined up here defensively With their defensive end inside our H back <clears throat> What this is going to end up turning into instead of a pull kick He's going to just going to wrap around and try to get the first man over because 
trying to get him to get inside to get to the second level. One, he won't get there. And if he tries to arc release to get to the second level, that's a long way for him to go as well. So it's easier just to wash this edge guy down and then work the tackle around the edge, which is what they do there. Would have liked to seen Braylon keep that one outside, but it is what it is. All right, so there's that's just a standard... Um, G power. Didn't see too many examples of that this year. What we saw the most of is what we're going to start off with here. And this is our GH lead. Okay, we're starting with a pretty bad example, but we can kind of show what we're trying to get here. Okay, so backside guard pulling. They're running this with a counter action. Okay, so same side power. Huber's going to work to most likely kick out with Rucci leading up inside. Okay, this play gets blown up because the defensive end number zero actually does a really good job of using what we call wrong arm technique on Huber, which pushes him back and gives him a shoulder and forces a cutback. All right, so moving on from the same game, <clears throat> this time, they using Ashcraft in motion to get a little bit of speed with it. And then what they do is they change the responsibilities. So <clears throat> when Fertney comes around and sees that 52 is not engaging, not crossing the line of scrimmage, he's again going to look to wrap up. And then Ashcraft can use his momentum to carry it up speed. Actually does a nice job getting that guy coming from the second level number. Well, can't see him, but you can tell that this guy right here. Number one, kick out. We get a nice little burst behind. Again, again, using the motion, pull kick. <clears throat> I'd like to see Nolkowski a little more downhill. I, I, I think his depth is a little bit too deep, which causes him to, to kind of hesitate when he gets stood up. I'd like him to stick his nose in there a little bit more. Okay, again, pull, and again, with the way <clears throat> that Iowa's playing with their front, with this edge guy reduced, we're just going to wash down and turn this into essentially a double lead with Huber, and then on the outside, but of course, Wisconsin uses this as an opportunity to throw an access throw, which we'll get into in the next uh chapter but we can see how the scheme is set up for the run if they would have chose it okay next up another example from purdue again a lot of good examples from the purdue game because of the great camera angle using the motion pulling huber to kick out gonna wrap around with rucci again would have probably liked to have seen braylon get it in here and then just burst it inside instead of trying to pull it outside, taking a little bit more contact than maybe he should have. But hey, we got a, we got a flag out of it, so we'll take it. Here we go against Rutgers. Again, same thing. Bad snap, but we do a good job of filling up in the blocks. Again, he squeezes, we wrap him up, we kick out with the H back, get a nice gain. Okay, again, using motion to create the little bit more momentum. And here we get the kick, and we get the lead up by Ashcraft. Braylon finishes it from there. Not a bad one to start with there. All right. Let's move on to the next play type. Okay, back to Rutgers. G lead, get around the corner. Again, we didn't do a very good job of clearing open the gap. Borderlini lets that zero get his outside hand free. But when you're running a scheme like this, you're not going to get help. Okay, next up. Again, quick little insight, and he's just working for, he's working for work, Ferton is. He's trying to get on and find the first available gap. He wants to get upfield, or he wants to hit the first guy he sees. He, he want, with that square pull, he wants to get upfield, but he doesn't find anything. So he gets the first red hat that comes downhill at him. 
and turns it into a nice gain. Okay, back to Rutgers, and now we're going to be moving on to oh, sorry, Rutgers, Purdue. Now we're going to be moving on to the GT League. Uh, so what we're going to get here is we're going to get a kick out from the tack from the guard, and then we're going to get a lead from the tackle. Now here, this is another example of how the Badgers add to this scheme is in you know we've run power plays like this forever at Wisconsin, but now adding both a option read here on this on this edge defender who is crashed inside you could also create a, uh, a pitch read here but you know all that work to gain nothing but in the past 15 would have came right in smoked the running back for a four-yard gain a four-yard loss excuse me at least you know a, a one-yard loss is a three-yard gain if we look at the comparables Okay, another example of GT. Again, they're going to use the H back to kind of widen things here. To kind of keep this edge defender wide, have him have to respect that. The arc release, which makes it easier to pull and pull check. Okay, Malman gets a little lost. I'd like to see his feet a little bit more square to the line of scrimmage. But when you got a back like Braylon, he can take care of the rest. Work it wide, put the foot in the ground, plant, accelerate upfield. Okay, back to Rutgers. Get a couple more of these. Any weak situation here where really Rutgers just, they kind of sit back. They don't really do a good job of filling. They're actually pretty good here by uh, Malman, excuse me, to chip, work to the second level. That little chip allows for, or excuse, Huber to get his shoulder around, get that lead. Nelson gets up on a line on a linebacker. Nice job. Okay, let's look at one more GT. And again, we pull it because it's not there. Okay, 45 just goes straight downhill. And again, what I like about this is we also have a, gave a pitch reel option for Mordecai. Okay, the next power we're going to show, I actually really like this one. This is what the one that the Badgers use a lot when they come out in 13 personnel. So they're out here with three tight ends and a running back and what they're basically going to do is they're going to down block the whole offensive line they're going to kick out with one tight end and they're going to lead with the other and they're going to run this with a little counter action so step in come back log around okay so we use power to create the inside wall we use speed to create the outer wall and then we lead with speed up in the middle okay a great use of the bodies that we have to get a nice, solid inside push, but also get have enough speed to come from all the way outside and still get the kick out and the lead block. Now we're gonna get another example of that here. Kick out, kick out. Now this time, four is coming off the edge and Ashcraft recognizes it too late. That should have been where his kick out was. He wanted to go more downhill, and that allows four to get around the edge. Okay, one more example of this. Again, we're going to get the counter action, step in, and we bully forward. We want to get down blocks on the point of attack, double teams if we can, kick out lead, get the first down. All right, and the last couple we're going to show here. Uh, this is an example of the dart blocking scheme, which is essentially a tackle lead, a tackle counter. And this is a, you know, we give Jack Nelson crap sometimes, but he's a big boy. Be able to get around the edge and then get his shoulders turned upfield to create an edge is really good. So I think he's going to be a pretty good guard at the next level.
Okay, so we're gonna see it again. Okay, and they're keeping the H back in here as a widen, also to make sure that he can't uh, get downhill. We're gonna down block, we're gonna kick out. And with the way the blocks are set up on the front half, well, we're basically base blocking everything on the front half. It gives Braylon a little bit more freedom to cut back. You know, part of the problem with down blocks a lot is you cut back, you're cutting back into an open shoulder. But here, since we had everybody kind of set up, that gives a nice cutback room. All right, let's take a look at one more. And again, all Nelson doing this because he's the guy that they feel that that can handle it. A little bit of an issue here, our tight end, Rucci, doesn't dig this out quite enough. Probably should have been going, going for a cut block here. And he allows the inside arm free of the edge guy, which allows him to skate down the line. We also, their linebackers does a pretty good job of scraping downhill going through the down blocks and then squaring up as soon as you get the line of scrimmage. That being said, we still got a four yard game. All right, so there are some examples of the power slash gap scheme used in the Wisconsin offense. A real nice compliment to the inside outside zone game that we've seen from the offense so far. And a staple of uh, the power spread offense, which is what you can categorize uh, the dairy raid as part of not only with the air raid but in the run scheme as well next time we are going to start talking about a very large encompassing topic and that is package plays and package plays are what has really made offensive football take a step forward because defense doesn't really have an answer or they do it's just the arrogance of defensive coaches won't allow them to make things simple so instead of doing the simple solution they want rule changes okay and that is package plays rpos everything like that plays where we try to put the defense in conflict of assignment and let them choose how they're going to beat us on a specific play so a specific play gives us multiple options and it's something that really simplifies the game if you can get good at it so that's what we'll take a look at next time hopefully next time my voice will be a little bit uh, more cooperative and i can get the next one out in a little bit more of a timely fashion but until then thank you for watching and we'll see you next time